Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Arctic Refuses to Melt as Ordered. That was actually the name of my first climate article, which was published in the Register in 2008. So let's review what's happened in the Arctic over the last 11 years since I wrote that article. The press is all full of great stories again today. Arctic summer melt shows ice is disappearing faster than normal. Climate change is causing strange events in the Arctic, research shows. Ice covering Arctic Ocean disappearing faster than normal. And here's the bottom line. Record Arctic ice melt may be even worse for another icy end of the planet. Well, we really messed things up, didn't we? We made all the ice melt, and now we're all going to die in an icy end to the planet. The article implies that it's happened before. I wonder when the last icy end to the planet occurred. Well, we better look at the data and see what's going on. This is a graph of Arctic ice extent from the multi-agency sea ice index, going back to their start of records in 2006. You can see that the ice extent increases every winter, and then it decreases in the summer, and it makes a nice cyclical waveform which repeats every year. Most years it does about the same thing, but the year 2012 was very interesting because it had both the highest winter extent and the lowest summer extent. The easier line to understand is the 365-day mean, shown as the thicker blue line across the center. This line doesn't have seasonal variations in it, and you can see that ice extent has remained about the same since the start of records in 2006. It wiggles up a little bit during high years and wiggles down a little bit during low years, but for the most part there hasn't been any significant change in Arctic sea ice extent since 2006. You can also see that the two lowest years were 2012 and 2007. That was a long time ago. Now let's compare it against expert forecasts made since I wrote my 2008 article. Expert Arctic polar ice cap may disappear this summer, March 1, 2008. The polar ice cap in the Arctic may well disappear this summer due to the global warming. Dr. Olav Orheim, head of the Norwegian International Polar Year Secretariat, said on Friday. And there's the arrow showing the date he predicted. Well, Dr. Orheim has a very long and impressive title attached to his name, so he must know what he's talking about. And here's another one from National Geographic News, June 20th, 2008. Arctic warming has become so dramatic that the North Pole may melt this summer, reports scientists studying the effects of climate change in the field. Well, National Geographic is very authoritative. They must know what they're talking about. The ice must be gone. And here's my favorite from the official news agency of Britain, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Swimmer aims to kayak to the North Pole, 30 August 2008. This year, for the first time, scientists predict that the North Pole could briefly be ice-free, and that has inspired Lewis Pugh to try to find a way through. There you have it. Scientists say the North Pole could be ice-free. What a great opportunity to kayak to the North Pole. Well, Lewis Pugh made it about 20 miles, turned around, went back, because there was no way to get through the very thick ice between Svalbard and the North Pole. Fast forward to 2012. Could all Arctic ice be gone by 2012? Satellite images say it might be. By Seth Bornstein, Associated Press. This week after reviewing his own new data, NASA climate scientist Jay Zwally said, at this rate, the Arctic Ocean could be nearly ice-free at the end of summer by 2012 much faster than previous predictions. The Arctic is screaming, said Mark Suri, senior scientist at the government's Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. There you have it, our top scientists predicting an ice-free Arctic in 2012. They must have been right. And the Arctic ice is screaming, where's your humanity? Give up your car, give up your meat, give up your lifestyle. Stop this ice from screaming. And there's the same story in National Geographic News. Arctic sea ice gone in summer within five years, Seth Borenstein, December 12, 2007. An already relentless melting of the Arctic greatly accelerated this summer, a sign that some scientists worry it could mean global warming has passed an ominous tipping point. And here's another story from the BBC. Arctic summer is ice-free by 2013. Their latest modeling studies indicate that northern polar waters could be ice-free in summers within just five to six years. Professor Maslowski told an American Geophysical Union meeting that previous projections had underestimated the process is now driving ice loss. So given that fact, you can argue that maybe our prediction of 2013 is already too conservative. 
And then Professor Peter Waddams of Cambridge University said, in the end, it will just melt away quite suddenly. And here's a very definitive article from the Sierra Club Canada, why Arctic sea ice will vanish in 2013. Well, the Sierra Club really cares about the planet and the Arctic, so send them money and prevent this 2013 catastrophe from occurring. And here's another one from Nobel laureate Al Gore. Polar ice cap may disappear by summer 2014. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. In the last few months, it has been harder and harder to misinterpret the signs that our world is spinning out of kilter. This guy won the Nobel Prize. He must really know what he's talking about. Our world is spinning out of kilter, and the ice has been gone for five years. And here's the very scientific projection from the Naval Research Lab, which Nobel laureate Gore based his forecast on. And here's another 2015 ice-free forecast from Professor Peter Waddams of Cambridge University again, reported in The Guardian. And The Guardian really cares about the planet, so I would listen to them and take them seriously. Another 2015 ice-free Arctic forecast from journalist Mark Hartsgard. This guy really cares about the planet a lot and he really knows what he's talking about. And here's another one from Peter Waddams at Cambridge University. His 2012 and 2015 forecast didn't work out too well, but he wasn't discouraged. He just pushed his forecast back to 2017 or 2018. And now comes the most important forecast of all from Dr. James Hansen of NASA. He was the guy who started the global warming scare before Congress in 1988. Let's see what he said. Tuesday, June 24th, 2008, by Seth Borenstein, AP science writer. Hansen, echoing work by other scientists, said that in five to 10 years, the Arctic will be free of sea ice in the summer. So that means the Arctic is gonna be free of sea ice sometime between 2013 and 2018. Representative Ed Markey, Democrat Massachusetts, committee chairman said, Dr. Hansen was right. 20 years later, we recognize him as a climate prophet. Well, this guy's a prophet. He must know what he's talking about. The Arctic must be free of sea ice now. But the best forecast was from President Obama's science advisor, John Haldron, in 2009. If you lose the summer sea ice, there are phenomena that could lead you not so very long thereafter to lose the winter sea ice as well. And if you lose that sea ice year-round, it's going to mean drastic climate change all over the hemisphere. That was an amazing prediction. North Pole gets no sunlight for six months, and yet somehow is going to stay above freezing for that entire six-month period. This guy was a presidential science advisor, so he must be really smart. And Obama is a really smart guy too, they tell me. So throughout this entire period, there's been no significant change in Arctic sea ice extent. Nothing is happening in the Arctic. Now I'm going to flip through the ice-free forecast very quickly. Keep your eye on the red arrow. 2008, 2008, 2008. 2012, 2012, 2013, 2013, 2014, 2014, 2015, 2015, 2015, 2018. They just keep pushing the arrow to the right, yet nothing is happening in the Arctic. Nothing is changing. However, there was a time when the Arctic was ice free, and that was six to seven thousand years ago when Stonehenge was being built. Atmospheric CO2 levels were very low at the time, so we can say with 100% certainty that Arctic sea ice extent has no correlation with atmospheric CO2. We can also say with 100% certainty that climate scientists have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to predicting Arctic sea ice and that they have no integrity. They just keep pushing their forecasts back. And every single day we see new stories about the Arctic melting down and how the planet's going to die and polar bears are going to die and the world's falling apart. And it's all just complete nonsense. Here's a graph of what's really going on in the Arctic. The blue line is Reykjavik, Iceland temperatures going back to the year 1900. You can see that temperatures around Iceland rose dramatically from 1920 to 1940 and then they fell dramatically into the late 1970s. And since the late 1970s, they've risen dramatically again. Climate alarmists always claim that satellite sea ice records began in 1979. That's not true, but it was the coldest year on record in Iceland. So of course, since then, the ice has diminished. 
The red line is the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, an ocean circulation pattern, which I'm going to talk about more in a minute. So let's see what was going on in the Arctic around 1940 at the peak of this big temperature spike. December 17, 1939, glaciers melting over Greenland. All the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting. It may without exaggeration be said that these glaciers, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. It was very warm in 1939, and the Arctic was rapidly melting. Here's another story from the New York Times, October 19, 1958. The changing face of the Arctic. Some scientists estimate that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was a half century ago that even within the lifetime of our children, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships to sail over the North Pole. It sounds like something the New York Times would say now, but that was written 60 years ago. Although the idea that a solid ice sheet covers the central Arctic has lingered stubbornly in the popular fancy, the northern cap of ice worn by our planet is actually a thin crust, on the whole only about 7 feet thick, over an ocean 2 miles deep in places. The ice thickness now is about 2 meters or 7 feet thick, so it's about the same as it was 60 years ago. It's unfortunate that New York Times writers don't read their own newspaper, because they might actually learn something if they did. But three years later, there was a dramatic change. New York Times, January 30th, 1961. Scientists agree world is colder. An assembly of specialists from several continents seems to have reached unanimous agreement on only one point. It's getting colder. And by 1970, we were into a full-blown Ice Age scare. Saturday, July 18, 1970, the New York Times, U.S. and Soviet press studies of a colder Arctic. The United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Chicago Tribune, March 2, 1975. It's getting colder. Brr, new ice age on way soon. Washington. In the last decade, the Arctic ice and snow cap has expanded 12%, and for the first time in this century, ships making for Iceland ports have been impeded by drifting ice. Does that 12% expansion of the Arctic ice cap sound familiar? Well, it should. There's that same 12% number in the 1958 New York Times article. That was how much the Arctic ice cap had decreased prior to 1958. So the ice decreased 12% prior to 1958, and then it increased 12% by 1975. It's almost like the climate is cyclical. Now let's go back and look at the Iceland graph again. It was very warm around 1940, and the glaciers were disappearing, and the ice was disappearing. Yet carbon dioxide levels were very low at the time. And then as carbon dioxide levels increased, the Arctic got much colder. So sometimes Iceland temperatures go up, sometimes they go down, but it has nothing to do with increasing carbon dioxide levels. But what it does correlate with very closely is the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. When the ocean circulation turns warm, the Arctic gets warm. When it turns cold, the Arctic gets cold. And the next time the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation gets cold again, then we'll get cold in the Arctic again, and the ice will increase. But what climate alarmists do is they start their graphs in 1979, right in the coldest year, and they say, the Arctic is warming up and the ice is melting, and it's all your fault. This obviously isn't true. If they were actual scientists, they would admit that they were wrong. But they'll never do that, because they're not scientists, they're propagandists. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been playing back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.